Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. In week 10 of the NFL season is here. If you want to place a bet on the gridiron action, Bet Online is the place to do it. Whatever sport, whatever time, whatever you're thinking, make sure y'all go to Bet Online. And Ike, our Believe producers wanted me to make mention of mm-hmm. next month's fight between Frank Gore, the former NFL running back, and former NBA guard Darren Williams, too. They're going to be fighting in Tampa on December the, December the 18th. That's part of the Jake Paul, Tom Fury, Showtime PPV card as well. And I know you're a big boxing guy, too, Ike. One of my homeboys, one of the trainers, he just called me two days ago. He wanted me to get on the undercard. So uh, <laughs> he was like, Ike, I'm telling you, you give me 10 weeks with you. It'll be a wrap. So I've been thinking seriously. Uh, but right now I'm just I'm I'm just chilling. But this is the second time he called me. He called me on the other one with Ocho, when Chad Ocho had fought on the undercard. He called me again on this one. He was like, Bro, I'm telling you, you need to do this. So it's crazy you just said that. But yeah, man, I'm, everybody keep calling me for these celebrity undercards. I might just start considering. Ike, I know this is an ad read, but this might be the most natural ad read we've had, had here on the Believe in Steelers podcast. I'm putting my life savings on Ike Taylor if you do decide to follow through with that. So I'm going to get you some money. We're going to eat that day. I'll mess around. And I'll go all in with that. We're going to eat that day, baby. <laughs> For our viewers and listeners, head to the new and updated desktop or mobile website, betonline.ag, to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your bonus. Bet online where the game starts. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome to another edition of the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ike Taylor. IT recording this on Thursday. This episode will be due out on Friday. We're breaking down and previewing Lions at Steelers NFL Week 10 already. How are you doing this morning, my man? Man, I'm doing good, Mark. Mark, how are you doing? I can't complain. And just based on the show open now, too, if you do decide to put your, you know, your your hat in the ring, if you will, too, uh, exciting possibilities. I've seen footage of you sparring before, Ike, and I know you mean business. I know that's something that you do. So I, I know we're talking football here, but just with today's sponsor, Bet Online, uh, it's a fun start to today's show. And you got damn right, man. If I wind up getting in that that square circle. Make sure you go to bet online and bet everything on because I'm going to get us this W. I love that, Ike. And the Steelers looking to get, what now, their fifth straight consecutive win on Sunday against the Browns. And I know that this is a winless Lions team. I love that Mike Tomlin, through his news conferences, communicating with his players, and I'll paraphrase here, saying, Yeah, they're an 0-8 team, but this is the NFL. This is not like going up against an FCS school or a non-group of five games. There's no homecomings. Any given Sunday, an NFL team can beat you. And this Lions team might be 0-8, Ike. I think they were in a lot of games that they should have won. And the game, I think, too, back earlier in the season, if not for a Justin Tucker, what was it, a 66-yard field goal that broke the NFL record? Lions right. would have at least one victory, and they've played some other teams pretty tough too. I know they're zero and eight coming off a bye week as well into Pittsburgh. I look, I, I see this nine point spread, Ike, and I just kind of shake my head. And I do expect the Steelers to win, but I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk that you would normally expect from a winless team. Yeah, desperate team is a scary team, and coming off the bye, that means they're going to have new gadgets, and I'm sure. The head coach is talking, man, this is a different half of the season coming off that bye. It's damn near right in between the middle of the season and the middle of the schedule. So, man, this game scares me, Mark. I know they say by nine, I'm thinking by five. 
And the reason by five is they're going to come out, they're going to throw the whole book, they're going to throw the kitchen sink, they're going to throw everything because really they have nothing to lose. So, and why not cool down a four win, a four game winning streak, Pittsburgh still a who's hot right now. So, man, this game scared me to death, honestly. Yeah, Ike. And if you go to the bet online odds right now, too, we both said this on previous episodes of the Believe in Steelers podcast. I don't expect this Lions team to go winless and become the NFL's first 0 and 17 team. And if you look at the odds courtesy of Bet Online, the odds of them going winless are plus 400, meaning if you put 100 bucks down, you would profit 400 and get 500 back. No right now is minus 700, meaning you'd have to put up $700 just to make 100. I don't think there's great value in either of those bets. So I'm not a betting man normally, but I would say just stay away because I do think that the Lions will eventually win. I don't think that the payout is worth what the odds are giving you right now either way. And so I would just completely stay away from that. I don't think there's good enough value on either side of that bet. I do expect the Lions to win a game at some point during this season. Yeah, hopefully it won't be against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. That, that's how I'm looking at it. But, yeah, I, I stay away from this game for sure. Like I said, man, this team scares me because of the situation. They coming off the bye week. Um, I'm sure head coach has just been, just been drilling them and telling them, hey, man, we can get the win. We can cool down the hot Pittsburgh team who was on a four-game win streak. The Lions have not beaten the Steelers since 1998. Now, again, I know that they're an NFC team and the Steelers are an AFC team. They have not won in Pittsburgh since 1955, Ike. So you're talking about two franchises that are really kind of the polar opposites of traditionally what you expect for success in each franchise. That's a good thing. Man, I remember I played Megatron for the first time and I was like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm not in the NFC. Uh, Megatron went for a hundred yards for, he went for a hundred yards on me in the first half. The first half. And my teammates and my teammates looked at me at halftime, <clears throat> excuse me, and they say, they say, what you gonna do? And I said, man, I'm gonna lock his butt up. And second half, man, he didn't have a catch, not one catch. And that's what them, them meaning my teammates and my coaching staff, they wanted to see me respond. You know, because that was the first time somebody put a hundred piece on me in any in any game, let alone the first half. And they just wanted to they wanted to see what old I could do in the second half. But man, one thing I do know about Megatron, man, he different. And he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, he was a special talent. He was a different talent. You knew where Matthew Stafford was going and you still couldn't stop him. So when you got a guy who's six five, six six, running four three. Uh, but it look it doesn't look like he's doing it. He's doing it effortless. When you got a guy who always high, catching the ball at at his highest point, um, that was Megatron, man. So I'm, I'm just glad Megatron was in the NFC, not the AFC. Yeah, I, I'm trying to research this game and pull up the box score here to see if I can find an exact date. But what I can tell you and take solace in this, Ike Taylor, you were far from the only player that Calvin Johnson did that to. So take solace in that. You're talking about a Hall of Fame caliber player. I believe you're talking about the game, and I've got the box score up here now. November 17th, 2013, if that right. sounds right to you. Yep, 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 show sure is. Yeah. Six, six receptions, 179 yards, and two touchdowns. Targeted 13 times, though, Ike. So you at least made him miss seven times. I mean, you see the six, you see the big stats and everything too, but how many times the Lions are trying to get him the football? Understandably so. You could double team him, triple team him. It didn't matter. That's why he has the nickname Megatron. But you're, again, I mean, he did that to a lot of different defensive backs in the league. Yeah, he he, was solace in that. Yeah, he he was different. I got to tip my hat to Megatron, man. And Megatron was all the way different. But my former teammate, Charles Peanut Punch, tell me, uh, he he handled his business against Megatron on the usual, on the regular. So uh, if I couldn't do it, for sure he did it. But then again, man, like I just said, man, shout out to Megatron, man. Megatron was hell. And I'm just so glad the dude wasn't in the, end of, I mean, the AFC. If you want to go down memory lane, Ike, you're talking about Peanut Tillman. I think about 
how he stole the ball from an another NFC North receiver, Randy Moss, when Tillman was a rookie, game-winning interception, and he rips the ball away from Randy Moss. I'm not sure if you remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember everything from Peanut, man. Peanut was different. Peanut, that was just Peanut, though. Peanut was like that, super smart, super, super savvy. And you can just tell how smart he is, man, by him going, and now he's working for the government. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what Peanut wound up doing after he retired. So he's just a super smart, super savvy, always inspired uh, kind of guy. He's he's a self-motivated, just always driven dude. That's, that's just nut. But when it came down to anything on the football field, he started this Peanut punch. And you see guys kind of putting it to their toolbox on the on the NFL field these days. So creating turnovers and doing all that. That was Charles Tillman for a long time. He's he's been Mr. Consistent doing that. So yeah, man. But anyway, man, we've been talking about Megatron. We've been talking about Peter. <laughs> I talked about myself a little bit. Let's get down to these Pittsburgh Steelers, baby. All right. Keys to the game, Ike. The Steelers ran the ball. 32 times against the Bears in week nine on Monday Night Football. Fourth consecutive game, they've ran the ball for 30-plus times. It's only Mm -hmm. the second time in Mike Tomlin's tenure that's happened. It goes back to the pitch count that we talk about with Big Ben and the Steelers' offense. Yes, so you saw they ran the ball over 30 times. You saw Big Ben threw the ball 30 or less times. That was our pitch count. That's who we've been talking about for the last six not even six months, the last two years. Put the man on the pitch count. You put the man on the pitch count, uh, you hand the ball off to Najee, you're running, you're, you're running back, you're a little young stud, and that's what you get. You get to control the clock a little bit. Ben didn't have any turnovers, threw a few good passes when he needed to, drove the ball down the field, give your defense a rest. Now we got action. You keep you keep that recipe going, man. Pittsburgh going to make the playoffs, but Pittsburgh do have to get more creative on that offensive side because it's still it's still looking like it's a struggle. One, to get the ball down the field. Two, to get first downs. I'm with you there, Ike. Now, on the flip side of the ball, too, you're going up against a Lions offense that's struggling a lot like the Bears offense was entering mm-hmm. week nine uh, a week ago. And Lions offense averaging 16.8 points per contest. And I know Jared Goff takes his lumps, and people say he's a warm-weather quarterback and everything, too. I think that this is a Lions team a lot like I expect the Steelers to be looking for a quarterback this right. upcoming offseason. Lions are going to be in the same boat. And the Lions, though, probably are going to go with a rookie QB with one of the guys coming out in the 2022 draft, whereas I think that the Steelers, they might do that, but I also think that they're going to look around the league and to see, to see what veteran quarterbacks could we bring in to Pittsburgh. Uh, so I do think there's a little bit of a difference there between the two teams and their quarterback needs beyond this season. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh, just, you know, just us talking about Pittsburgh every week. I don't know if Coach T wants to start with a rookie quarterback. Um, Coach T probably want to get a savvy or a veteran quarterback, somebody who fits not only that city, but who fits the team and their personality. Uh, the Lions, Detroit Lions, they – it's it's tough right now. Honestly, Detroit Lions been been in games, but it's it's just they've been running out of gas. You know, when they played the Packers, they was in the game, they ran out of gas. When they played play the Baltimore Ravens, they was in the game, they just ran out of gas. So really, 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 the Detroit Lions really haven't been blown out. I think so for two games, they've been really blown out. They just they just been finding ways to lose or just been running out of gas. But they do have a running game, so I, I need Pittsburgh to respect these Detroit Lions running game because that's just their coach personality. Their coach, to me, in my eyes, he's a first-year coach like Mike Vrabel. So all they want is tough guys. You can look at the draft. You can see his first-round draft pick, his offensive tackle coming from Oregon, uh, P. Sewell. You can, you can see the running backs that he had got mm-hmm. coming off of free agency. You can see his offensive line. You can see his defense. Like, that's his personality, man. He wants to do smash mouth football on both ends of the stick. So next year they will be better, but Pittsburgh, I hope Pittsburgh don't play down to the level of competition. And this is no disrespect to the Detroit Lions, but again, Detroit hasn't won in Pittsburgh since when, Mark? 1998 is the last time the Lions beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh specifically, 1955, Ike. I appreciate that, player. Ike, we're going to get into our Week 10 matchups now. And... A lot to get through, so we'll kind of go game by game, each make a point, each make a pick, so we can rip through these. Saints at Titans. Titans favored by three points at home. 
And Derrick Henry is going to be out with that foot injury for the foreseeable future. Now, the Titans bring in Adrian Peterson, a future Hall of Fame player, and it's kind of a running backs by community, Deontay Foreman uh, and then Jeremy McNichols. In week nine, only 3.4 yards per carry from that trio. And the Saints have the number one rushing defense in the NFL. Give me the Saints to win outright on the road against the Titans in week 10. So I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans over the Saints. And the reason why I think they're finding a way um, to still run the ball. Uh, McNichols, I think they should get him more carries so he can get the groove with the offensive line because I think he's a younger, fresher, bigger, stronger, faster running back right now between, you know, Adrian Peterson and Devontae Freeman. So I think them two should be the backup at this point in time. But, yeah, I mean, they finding a way. We're not talking about their defense. And their defense is finding a way to create turnovers, make big plays. They have a they have an all-pro defense of tackle number 90. Hey, he been playing out. He been playing. He been playing out his mind. So, uh, and, and you know, the secondary guys they're very opportunistic in, in catching picks and, and reading plays and taking chances early. So, I like this Tennessee defense, man. At first, that's what I thought. When the, the weakness was was this Tennessee defense, but over the past couple of games, they were shutting the offenses down. If you could just look at what they did to the LA Rams, they just took Matthew Stafford and they took his heart and his soul on national TV. That's exactly what they did. So, with the Saints, man, if if Jameis Winston was playing, I probably would have went with the Saints. But right now with Trevor, I'm not going to go with the Saints, even though you want to talk about a head coach that has a beautiful mind. That's Coach Sean Payton. But I'm going to rock with Coach Mike Vrabel right now, especially in Tennessee. Um, them boys are hot down the road and they got action. I think that Vrabel might be the most underrated coach in the league. I agree. And, and I agree. he's – I mean, the, the fact that he's got this team at 7-2 and two right now is incredible. Right. Is, is it Naquan Jones that you're thinking of on the Titans line, Ike? Uh, the he's defensive a rookie. Line, defensive lineman, 98? 98. I'm sorry. You're talking about Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, he been, he been cutting up. And cutting up is New Orleans term like he been balling. That young man been cutting up, man. He been cutting up, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Keep eye on him. Keep eye on him. Ike, after today's pod, I hope you can say that about my performance, that my co-host Mark Bergen, he was cutting up on cutting today's up. episode of the Believe in Steelers you always podcast. Be cutting up the show, though. That's why I show the show, because you stay cutting up. I love it. I love it. Okay, Browns at Patriots and mm-hmm. Ike. Browns, second best rushing as a team on a per yards per game basis. But Nick Chubb, Dimitri Felton both have COVID. It's unclear whether they'll play. They'll need two negative tests 24 hours apart. Kareem Hunt also out with a calf injury. Enter Dearness Johnson, who's played really well, and the opportunities that he's gotten behind Chubb and Hunt. But the Patriots favored by two and a half points at home. Who you got in this matchup between the two AFC teams? Yeah, I got Big Mac and the Patriots. And the reason why I got Big Mac and the Patriots is because Coach Belichick is going to take the running game away from the Cleveland Browns, and he's going to tell Baker to beat me. That's exactly what he's going to do. So, honestly, this is going to be Baker, this is going to be Baker's make it or break it kind of game. Is, this, is it true that you are a trailer? Or are you trying to move up and be the truck and pull the team? Because we already know what Coach Belichick is going to do. He's going to put 11 in that box, and he's going to – mean not 11. He's going to put eight in the box, and he's going to dare Baker Mayfield to beat him. I said 11. That's an all-out blitz. Against Baker Mayfield, that might be effective, Hike. I know a lot's made of, oh, he's not great against the pressure. Show me a quarterback who is. I mean, (laughs) but that might be a good, I mean, I will say this about Baker and his performance this year. It comes with the caveat when we talk about him for the remainder of this season, Ike. I understand the injury he's playing through in his left non-throwing shoulder. So anything we say about him from this point moving forward, really until he has uh, surgery in the offseason to repair that is with that caveat, I don't think he can do it either. I'm with you. I'm taking the Patriots to cover at home as well. Uh, I'm with you because you eliminate the running game, and especially we don't know if Chubb and Felton will play. I like Dearness Johnson as a young player in his third season in the league. But to say, can you beat New England Patriots and Bill Belichick and everything there? I think the Patriots, if they win again, they'll win four in a row. I mean, other than the Steelers, they're one of the hottest teams in the league right yeah. now, low-key. I agree. Falcons at Cowboys. The Cowboys favored by nine points. This is a Falcons team, Ike, 
that has given up the most points in the NFL and a Cowboys offense that's very explosive. And I think they come out firing, especially considering that they only scored 16 a week ago against the Denver Broncos. I don't know if the Cowboys will cover in this game, but what I would tell our viewers and listeners is this. Take the Cowboys money line and put it in a parlay. That's my two cents worth. I like the Cowboys to win. Not sure about the nine points, but put them in a take them money line and put that in a parlay. That's my two cents worth. What say you about this matchup, Ike? Falcons, now, Cowboys in week 10. We're on the same page because I was thinking about six. I was thinking the Cowboys by six, not by nine. And I think the Cowboys will come out firing off of what happened the last week. You know, especially off of them coming off a bye week. It did look not a bye week. Uh, Dak's coming back out of his first his first game after missing a game from being injured. It didn't look good at all. So I think Dak got a full week. Uh, he got his rhythm and his timing back with his receivers. He's back in the groove, and I think they're gonna put up some points. But I don't know by nine. I'm, I'm guessing six. Cooper Rush tripped you up there, Ike. Yeah, Cooper. Cooper handled his business. He showed that yeah. Cooper got him a dub. Okay, we will go to Seahawks at Packers, which is like low-key one of the NFL's best rivalries, just traditionally. Now, this line has been all over the place. It opened up that the Packers were going to be a five-point favorite. They're now favored at home by three and a half. And that opening line reflected this, that Aaron Rodgers would return. That was more likely than Russell Wilson coming back for the Seahawks. Now, that changed this week because Wilson is back in practice this week And Rodgers, the earliest he could be cleared is on Saturday. So I will say this. If the Packers do get Rodgers back, I expect them to take care of business after kind of an embarrassing loss to the Chiefs. The Packers' defense played really well against Kansas City as well. They did. The Packers, Packers, that was a Super Bowl Packers defense against KC, what I saw um, last week. And – We'll see if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there. I'm still going to take the Packers. I think now, um, due to this, to this COVID protocol with 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 uh, Aaron Rodgers, whether he's there or not, I'm still going to rock with the Packers. And the reason why I'm going to rock with the Packers is I don't trust the 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 Seattle Seahawks defense right now, and I do trust the Green Bay Packers defense. I think now that we have two weeks on Jordan Love, I think the the, the coaching staff now, if Aaron isn't there to make it or play. I think now they, they got a recipe. They got they got some plays for him. They got an offense for him to fit his style. I think it, it took a week. They just had to go through the growing pains against the Kansas City Chiefs. So, honestly, he's going against damn near two similar type type of defenses. They both not top 20 defenses at this point in time in the season. So, at least he's getting some training wheels. He's taking baby steps, but he's taking them against defenses who not like upper echelon kind of defenses right now. So, I think the game plan will be better with Jordan Love. Um, I think they will run the ball more. I think they will get him out of the pocket, uh, him doing boots. Um, I like the Green Bay Packers defense oversee out, oversee out of defense. So regardless who's that quarterback, either Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love, I'm still taking the Green Bay Packers. And I think if and when Rodgers gets clear, this line will continue to move too. So if you're of the notion that Rodgers will play, maybe grabbing the Packers at three and a half right now is the smart move because if okay. Rodgers gets cleared – I think that line moves back up closer to that five point spread that it opened with as well. So, you know, make, make your move. And if you want to take Ike's advice too, regardless of who's starting taking green Bay could be a sound decision. I will say this too: Seahawks Uh defense that has some playmakers on it. I'm talking about uh, the Bobby Wagner's and Jamal Adams of the world. But other than that, I think this is a, this is not the Legion of boom defense we saw several years ago. So I'm with you there. I, I especially if Rodgers comes back, I think three and a half points is tremendous value. I would take the Packers right now if you can get it at three and a half. Let's go to Bucks against the Washington football team. The Bucks favored by ten points on the road. A rematch of a playoff matchup we saw a uh, last right. season. Now again, I go. I see ten points on the road. That's a lot. And I talked about putting the Cowboys in a parlay. Here's the other team where you bet the money line on. Take the Bucks in a money line parlay, a two game parlay. Take the Bucks and the Cowboys. I like the Bucks winning on the road against the Washington football team. And for this reason, Washington's going to be without Montez Sweat. 
He's got a non-displaced jaw fracture. And then Chase Rollier on the offensive line as well. You're talking about two key members of the line on both sides of the football for Washington. Give me the Bucks. I'm going to take them, again, money line parlay, along with the Cowboys as well in their game too. 10-point favorite on the road. I how do you see this game? Yeah, I'm going to take the Bucks, but I don't know by 10. And the reason why I don't know by 10, I think – the Washington team will come around how they did last year when you want to talk about defenses, not getting pressure, having four uh, first rounds on that D-line and, and getting to the quarterback without blitzing. Um, I think they're going to get back to that. The only problem is what's going to happen on the offensive side. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think this is the game where the Washington team, they look at and they mirror the, the Tampa Bay Bucks defense. Like, we got the same kind of defense. We got the same kind of defensive line. We're just not playing like how we played last year. I think they're going to kick it off and they're going to play they're going to play good sound football. This week they're just not going to win a game against the Tampa Bay Bucks. I think towards the end, you know, Tom Brady always come through Mr. Statue. Y'all call him the GOAT. I call him Mr. Mr. Statue cuz every city he needs to go in, they need to build a man a statue because all they do is kick butt and take names. <laughs> <laughs> I can always tell you and it's like I know what I'm going to say right after you say it. And it's like you make me laugh. Completely forgot what I was going to say. Mr. Statue. I like that with Tom Brady. I like that. Uh, I'll say this, too, about the Bucks coming off a bye week as well. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see, do they come out guns firing a lot of veteran players on the Buccaneers? Or is it more of a little bit of rust there and it takes them time to get going? I do like them to win. Uh, let's see. Two more matchups we need to get to, Ike, before we get to our Lions Steelers score prediction. Chiefs at Raiders. Chiefs favored by two and a half on the road. I look at the Chiefs line every week, and just the the betters love betting on the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Clyde Edwards Hilaire and Kyle Long returned to practice yesterday on Wednesday, but they both remain uh Edwards Hilaire on injured reserve and then long on the pup list. And so they're not on the injury report because they're not on the 53 man roster yet. So the team has three weeks to add both of those players back. This game though, comes down to stopping Darren Waller for the Raiders, one of the league's best tight ends. And the chiefs are one of the worst teams in the league. They've surrendered 617 yards in their first nine games to tight end. That is actually, that is worst in the league as well. So just given the defensive struggles that the Chiefs had, I'm going to take the Raiders at home on Sunday Night Football against Kansas City. Yeah, I'm going to take KC on this one. You know, I am I like KC right now. Um, I don't know if the Raiders can bounce back from their loss going to the East Coast against the Giants. I just don't know if they can. I think now we're going to start to see the momentum with the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm going to take KC in this one. Um, I think – Patrick Mahomes, he found a way to win last week in a tough one, even though Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. But I think they still needed that win regardless. Um, I think they see that they do need to run the ball more because they've been passing the ball a lot and they're very predictable. And games have been too close and their defense haven't been playing well at all. So to help a defense who is struggling, you run the ball, keep them off the field. Hopefully they'll make a few plays for you. So I think I'm going to take KC in this, but I just don't trust, you know, um, the Raiders right now with the loss. And I'm looking at the momentum that the Kansas City Chiefs have. Interesting. The Chiefs team, though, Ike, in their last three games, only 36 points Mm -hmm. scored. It's a Chiefs offense that struggled because you bracket Travis Kelsey. You let Tyree Kill do what he does underneath, but you're going to take and put a roof over the top with two safeties deep. You've told me this. What's your counter to that if you're Kansas City? And I know they bring in Josh Gordon, and I know this is part of the reason why they're in the mix to get Odell Beckham Jr. Defenses right. take away those two things. What is your counter? And that's what they need to figure out moving forward. Running the football, too, I, I mean. Right. Hopefully Correct. they can get Edwards Elair back, too, because when they went on their Super Bowl run just two years ago, and we talk about when they won the Super Bowl, we always bring up the fact that Damian Williams kept them in the game. And I asked you the question, should he be the Super Bowl MVP? And yes. Ike, you said you were like, if you're asking the question, you already know the answer to it. So Correct. there you go. There you go. Correct. That, that's that, that's what they need to do. They, they need to get back to it. Every time they drive down the field, it's off a of running. 
Then they get cute. Then they get it back out their element, and they think they transformers, and they get back to passing again. But every time they – all the drives, the two drives they had, they did it by running the ball, not passing the ball. I love that. Ike, I'll play the Shia LaBeouf role in the Transformers. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Monday Night Football, Rams at 49ers. Rams favored by four on the road. Von Miller's debut. Give me the Rams against mm-hmm. the NFC West yes. opponents. I, yeah. I, I don't even think this is going to be close. Yeah, I don't either. Von Miller, I'm kind of – so you got a Hall of Fame cornerback in Jalen Ramsey. You have a Hall of Fame defensive tackle in Aaron Donald. You got a Hall of Fame defensive end, all playing. And let's not forget, last week, I guess because Von Miller came, Malcolm Floyd went bananas on that defensive end and his rushes and cause of havoc. Went went bananas. So sometimes bringing somebody in, if you get too comfortable, you bring somebody who's special. It makes you step your game up or you're going to pout about it. Floyd stepped his game up. So we can get them two boys, Von Miller and Floyd, coming off the edges. You already know what Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Donald doing coming coming down that pipeline. And you know if Jalen Ramsey see that and he catch a feel for, okay, my defensive line is getting to the quarterback. I'm going to go ahead and sit on these routes. He's been really, he's been a defensive player of the year. Let, let's talk about Jalen Ramsey. And right now, if I had to pick, it would be Jalen Ramsey, defensive player of the year. But, yeah. I got the L.A. Rams. I'm sorry to answer your question. No, no, you're good, Ike. And I go back to the point I brought up many pods ago. Aaron Donald's gotten a lot of people paid. And I look at Leonard Floyd getting a massive contract extension with the Rams. Yes. The the Browns poaching John Johnson, the third, the safety, and then Troy Hill. They both got paid. So I know you get a little bit salty on the offensive side of the ball when you say, look how many people that Tom Brady got paid. Hey, Aaron Donald, he makes life heck of a lot easier for a lot of his. I don't don't like that. Usually usually I think outside the box. I I like beat people to the punch. I want to come down to think you beat me to the punch on that one, bro. I I just looked at it. It was like, okay, you've got a top ranked defense and you can't bring back every player. What happens? Where do they go? Do they stay with the team? They sign for a massive contract elsewhere. And it's like, well, what's, you know, <laughs> what's the reasoning for this? And it's the man up front, Aaron Donald, who's in the mix as defensive player of the year every year. And he puts up from a statistical output what you would expect from an elite edge rusher, let alone he's playing on the interior of the line. I mean, Correct. there's a reason he's best of the best. He's a transcendent player. We both like the Rams on Monday Night Football, but Ike, it is time. Lions at Steelers. Steelers favored by nine points at home. What's your score pr- prediction? between Pittsburgh and Detroit? 24-17. Okay, mine was very similar. I had Steelers 27, Lions 21, over under at 42 and a half in this one as well. So we both like the Steelers to win, but we like the Lions to cover in this game. So I I talked about the two-game parlay, taking the Bucks taking the Cowboys, throw the Steelers in there. You got a three-game parlay, money line parlay, just considering how each of those teams are favored. Okay, Steelers not quite by double digits, but close to double digits in each of those games. We like the favorites uh, in each of those games too. But Ike, it's always a blast. Uh, We're recording this on Thursday. I just want to give a shout-out to all the veterans out there, anyone serving in the U.S. military, they allow their sacrifices allow us to enjoy the freedoms that we take for we often take for granted so i just want to give a shout out to the veterans out there considering we're recording on thursday on veterans day no happy veterans day i um, want to thank all the veterans for sacrificing um not only your lives but your families um i know it's hard on the family um this is this is this is life or death and y'all are doing it because y'all care about the country Y'all doing it because y'all care about our freedom. Y'all doing it because y'all want this country to be the best country. So I just want to tip my head off and give a major, massive shout out to all the veterans who sacrifice um, whatever arms, limbs, life. Um, coming from IT, uh, the Believe is still this podcast. And Mark, um, I'm sure you're, I'm sure, and we're very thankful for, for everybody who's doing what they need to do to make this country uh, the best country. 
And Ike, you've got some upcoming events with your cigar line, one of a kind cigars, Howard G Cigars. Please let our listeners and viewers know. I've got know you've got some weekend events this weekend. Yeah, so if you if you in a, if you in a, if you're in the area tonight, we're at Corona Lake Mary from six to ten. If you're in the area on Saturday, Sand Lake Road in Orlando from two to eight. If you're in the area next Saturday, which is the nineteenth, we're in downtown Corona. So come check us out, man. Our line has been more than what I could ever imagine. Um, me. And my homeboy, how we always say, man, God has been good to us. So I just want to thank everybody. Appreciate the support. And I only support with the, with the cigar line. I want to thank everybody for, for, for giving us a five-star review, rate your review. I want to thank my homeboy, Mark. I want to thank Miss Courtney, her team at Breaks TV. I want to thank Bet Online for rocking with us since day one. I want to thank Believe It Still is podcast for giving me and Mark this opportunity. So, I want to appreciate everybody. I want to thank everybody for just make sure, man, y'all give us five stars, great review us, because that's all we drop is nothing but dimes. We got one more shout out, Ike. It is Paul Bergen, Papa Bergen's birthday on Friday, too. So happy birthday, Dad. And thanks for your support of the show as well. Appreciate you, Pop. <clears throat> Tell Pops, man. Tell Pops, man, when I see him, we're going to uh, sip some red grapes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for listening and watching the Believe in Steelers podcast. We will see you next week on Monday following Lions and Steelers. Until then, take care and so long, everybody. Peace.